Some films defy description. This is one of them. Starring Brandon Lee and Ernie Hudson. From acclaimed producer Edward R. Pressman. Directed by Alex Proyas. It's called The Crow. The Crow was conceived as a three-volume graphic underground comic novel inspired by the author's true life experience. It's about a young man and a young woman who are tragically killed over a $30 engagement ring. Two lives wasted over a $30 ring. And so that became the beginning of the vocal point. There could be a love so, so strong that it could transcend death. I love you that it could refuse death. This soul would not rest until it set things right. The Crow became a cult classic among fans of underground comics and attracted the attention of Hollywood producer Ed Pressman. I've always been attracted to two general areas uh, for, for movie subjects. One area was kind of reality-based films like Wall Street, and the other is pop fantasy. I, I saw in, in Obar's work in The Crow a unique vision. Well, The Crow brings you into a world unlike you've ever experienced before, and that's what a movie should do. Page. Marker. Hold still. Each one of these is a life. A life you helped destroy. The dark tones and splatter style of the comic, admittedly influenced by the author's fascination with the industrial rock music of Ian Curtis and The Cure, cried out for a director with a vision to blend sound, light, and imagery. Producer Ed Pressman found that visionary in Australian music video and commercial filmmaker Alex Proyas. He has a way of looking at things unlike anyone I've known. What appealed to me about the thing is, is this very evocative mood that is created by the comic book. And that's what I wanted to recreate. You know, that's the thing that I think everyone involved with the film is, is, is quite passionate about bringing to the screen. We've tried to give it that quality just with the art direction and the, and the lighting. And uh, we're being very specific about colours when we're giving it this very dark, expressionist sort of uh, look. To me, the... Background to all of this is, is kind of early 70s punk. And the nightclub scene is going to be important to just, you know, hammer that home, I think. Musically, Joy Division, um, The Cure, Bauhaus, Peter Murphy, those musicians that are incorporated into the comic aesthetically is a kind of an urban reality as well as a rock and roll credibility. It's like a lot of adventure and action. And... <laughs> some romance. It's a lot different than the normal movies that people just go out to see, and uh, it's pretty cool. It's gorgeous. They've gotten everything down 110%. Some of the scenes, it looks like they just pulled panels right out of the comic book and, and set them to life. The fans of The Crow will love this movie. I want the whole film to feel very confronting. Try hard. Try again. To me, the challenge is always to try and break away from that and try and, uh, and give us a way, show us a way that we've never seen something before. of the director achieved. Now, one indispensable contribution must be added. The performer who is central to the story, vital to its vision. Brandon Lee is chosen to embody the character Obar describes as a Harlequin death rocker who believes where love is concerned, there are no boundaries between good and evil. It's a wonderful role and it, it really is a role that you have to take risks with, and it gives you a wonderful opportunity to take those risks and stretch. It's like he's experiencing this weird dream, and we're, we're seeing it with him. His mission is to find the man who killed him and his fiancée, 
The reward that he has promised is that he will be with Shelley, the woman that he loved, in a better place if he does what he has been sent back to do. I gave this to Shelley once. I think she'd like you to have it. This way you'll always remember her. The appeal of Eric's mission is that it is a very pure one. He has come back to seek justice for himself and for the woman he loved, and in a sense, for anyone who is victimized and has never had the chance to seek justice. This is not a good day to be a bad guy. I think that the crow is that rational voice. The crow is his guide. It leads him to the places that he has to be. When you do something like this, you create rules within the piece. This, as long as you continue to be truthful to what you've created, then it's going to work. The spirit on the film when I was down in Wilmington was extraordinary. Every so often there's a film there that the whole crew and the spirit of the film comes together and there's a, an energy and a commitment that really makes it something special. Set and action! <laughs> and then, only days before conclusion of principal photography, the unthinkable happens. A tragic accident ends the life of Brandon Lee. When the accident occurred, it was, uh, you know, unbearable. But the performance itself was, was done, and Brandon was so proud of it and uh, so excited about it. Brandon's warmth really just, it just sort of permeates the whole film, and it, it, it radiates. I felt compelled to finish this work um, as a legacy to Brandon and the incredible uh, performance he, he's given, but also to the dedication and, and talent of Alex Proyas, whose extraordinary vision was something that was was far beyond, uh, well, you know, our, our expectations. It wasn't until I saw the movie that I, I know that decision was right. I think our work is our gift. That's that's all we have to give. And uh, I think it's it's a gift from Brandon. I think it is a tribute to him.